two, 500 at five, classification. Now we're gonna be classifying them. The locations are classified according to the properties of the gas, the flammable gas, the flammable liquid produced vapors, the combustible liquid vapors, combustible dust, the easily ignitable fiber or flyings that may be present, and the likelihood that the flammable or combustible concentration will be present. Okay, so now each room or area is considered individually in determining its classification. So we're not going to get into details here, but somehow somebody has determined that this area here or some process was determined that the room is a class one division two, which we'll talk about. And let's say the pit is a class one division one, which we'll talk about, but somebody said, defined. well, all the other spot that's not classified. Well, this is just chapter one through four wiring. But once I jump in here, now it's a classified location. We have to comply with chapter five. We're going to get into 501 and we're going to talk about that. Yep. Uh, note, information on note, to reduce the need for expensive equipment and expensive wiring, locate as much electrical equipment as possible in an un unclassified location. So in this room here, we're going to have some lot of special, con special consideration. Well, if you can put it outside here, put the disconnect outside. Don't put it inside that room or whatever the case may be. That is a good decision. In a class one location, a class one location, now we're starting to talk about what you've been talking about. Okay, what is it? A class one. See, this is a class one, what we're going to be covering, class two, and class three. So now class one is a location where flammable gases, flammable liquid produced vapors, or combustible liquid produced vapors may be present in quantities sufficient to produce an explosive or ignitable mixture. Okay, so now we're talking about basically gases. So then here's the definition. A location which ignitable flammable gases, liquid produced vapors or combustible liquids produced exists under normal operating conditions or because of repair and maintenance or leakage or because something breaks down and there's a faulty operation equipment. So in other words, if you have something there that something could happen, it normally it's there. Hey, listen, you're the, gas, you're the gasoline dispenser. I mean, you, have, you get gasoline fuel right there. It's normal. You can see it's going all over the place. It gets on your hands, right. on your shoes. Okay, well, but maybe you're having your transporting uh, propane tanks. Well, normally you're not going to have them. But, you know, something could fall and get damaged. you got a process that you have a, you know, some kind of processing and then something damages, something breaks. Well, well we got to consider it. Not, not us, but the process engineers. Right. Somebody's going to decide right. what it's going to be. But it's gases and vapors. But look at the look at the wiring without getting into detail. This is not a piece of uh, MC cable, you know what I mean, going into a regular box. Without getting into the informational note, you'll notice that all of this has to do with flammable. Yep. And then if we go to class one now, that was class one, division one. Let me go back here. See, there's a class one, which is about the gases. And now there's a division one, which says, well, that's because it's probably going to be there for some reason. Normal operating conditions, repair maintenance leakage, or because of failure. That's class one. And then class two is like, well, yeah, it's there. Um, it's normally confined within a closed containers or closed systems, but only escapes in case of an accident or abnormal operation equipment. Uh, or you know what, they got some kind of ventilation that, that, you know, that if anything should happen, you know, we got ventilation. Or maybe it's just simply adjacent to a class one, division one location. We got a transfer, transition between a class one, division one, somehow to a non-classified area. And, and maybe we go from class one, division one, which is like expected to be there into a class one division two that it's not expected to be there. And then we have mitigating factors or in a container, it's not likely to be exposed. We have ventilation, whatever the case may be. And then of course you go to non-classified. Mario. Yeah, and if you're just first learning this stuff, what really helps to, to, for you to know the difference between a class one division one and a class one division two, highlight your code book, class one Divi division one normal operation. Highlight the word normal. Class one, division two, abnormal operation. Yep. Really, I would helps underline that. Underline it, yeah. But highlight, you know, class one, division one. Then I'd add the uh, underline normal. You'd have that potential. Yes. And then I'd highlight class one, division two, and I'd uh, abnormal. Abnormal. But you know what? We don't. Right. We don't even care. Right. Because somebody else's, this is somebody else's 
thing to have to determine. But we should understand how it's it works. It's good to have yes. the but insight. Once we understand how it right. works, then we now we know what it is because we see it. It says that. It's just class one to be, oh, okay, well, then I'm going to go do what I got to do. So we got an interesting comment here uh, on the live stream. Um, I actually don't know Bob. I'm not familiar with him, but Bob and uh, research have been kind of going back and forth. And Bob says, uh, with the exception of articles 511 through 516, a location cannot be classified from the NEC, kind of going back to needing engineers to do this. So, however, um, it's interesting to note that in all the other areas, the NEC only tells us how to wire the areas. This is for research classified by using other documents. So I, I wanted to just mention something, and as we go along, we'll see. This is a real difficult thing for an electrician that's not doing new installation. An electrician that's building a job for the first time, it's easy. You call up the engineers, you say, hey, I need to know what this is. It's not even your problem anymore. You put an RFI, they gotta give you an answer back. But if I'm Brian the electrician and I show up at a job site at a quick lube, I do actually need to understand this stuff. And, and as we go along, it is important, Mario. Yeah, to have to, insight. To, to have insight to understand when you need to ask a question, because you might be going in there to do something as simple as replace a fixture. Or you might be going in there to do something as simple as add a receptacle outlet, and you need to understand what's going on so you can determine if you're out of your league. It's really, really important. Okay, let's move on to uh, class two. Class one is vapors and gases, explosive, normal. It's going to be around. It's a division one, abnormal division two. Eric? Yeah, I just want to clarify that. You know, normal, abnormal, what does that really mean? I shorthand, I've always said that class, division one it takes one uh-oh to have an explosion. Division two, it takes two uh-ohs to have an explosion. So division one, the stuff is always there. Uh-oh, boom, it's gone. Like, boom, it's <laughs> yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. Division, one mistake, you're on fire. Yeah, yeah one mistake, okay. one, one ignition Very source. Cool. Division two, you have to have a loss of primary containment, so you have to have a leak, and then you have to have a spark. I knew that. Very cool. That's why they call it Division one, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. For class one, which is really bad, in class two. Div one, div two. That's so bad. So let's now, go to. We actually have a note here. As I said, I didn't know who Bob was. Bob used to be on co making panel 14 and a member of both NFPA 497 and API RP 500, whatever that is. I think he's yeah, a really smart guy. Bob, we are so happy you're on the stream, so keep us straight. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, now we're going to go to class two. Now, class two is where a hazard because of the presence of combustible dust. Okay, it's not, it's not a vapor, it's dust. Dust is, you know, can only can float so far away, you know what I mean? But it, and you can see it kind of, where vapors you can't see, Mario. And there is a definition for combustible dust in uh, part three, article 100, if you want to know what a combustible dust is. Give me a shot. Go for it. Okay. Tell me what it says. I'll read it. You know. <laughs> but it is interesting because, again, I don't care. You know why? Because I'm not establishing the classification. Somebody's giving me documentation. Right. I'm the electrician. Right. I'm sorry. Unless you, I don't know. I don't care about all this. Good with the microns and all that other stuff. Go ahead, tell me. So it says here, dust particles that are 500 microns or smaller. One second. Do you know, I don't even know what a micron is. Which oh, me neither. I don't care. But whatever a micron is, <laughs> somebody <laughs> needs to know. Now watch this. Microns, half now, million. somebody who's watching streaming, they can help me out here. We need to do some comparison. If you have a saw in a, wo a workshop and you got dust that's floating in a workshop, you with me? Somebody I know that's watching this in the planet knows how big that dust is. Actually, you said the word. You have dust that's floating. Doesn't if matter. The dust is floating. It's definitely small enough to be classified. Yeah, definitely wrong. Because yeah. it has to be how many microns? 500 microns. Which is so smaller I don't than half know. a millimeter. No, no, no. Well, no, 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 no. I, no, no. You find something. I have that's heard that coffee grain is 500 microns. Yeah, but we don't know. So we well, don't want to talk about what you heard because we don't care. <laughs> we hear about it. Somebody could tell us. I bet you there's some place that shows like, you know, how you have like the sun and then you have the earth, the moon, the planets, you know, and you have all the things inside here, or, you know, and the, and the blade of a grass and, you know, the sites. In other words, something is going to show you like, wow, now I you know, unless you give me some kind of relationship, something 
that I don't even know what the heck a micron, I don't know what 500 microns is. Is that the width of a hair? How much it's is a hair? Half a millimeter. I mean, you know, I don't know what a micron, what is a micron? You know the kind of kind of. It's, it's a millionth of a, of a meter. So it's uh, 500 microns would be half a millimeter. It's 500, it's a half of a millimeter. Half of a millimeter. A millimeter is pretty big, right? What? I just said that, and you're like, I don't care. <laughs> no. Yeah, but he, I he literally just care. said it. I'm just saying, oh, it's big. But it, Okay, we're going to move on until somebody shows me. Whatever it is, Mario. Right. I actually but, have some pictures. Yeah, he's got some pictures got some right pictures here. Is it the thickness of a penny? So, oh, I got these guys going. <laughs> so the Mario. thickness of the penny. So Coffee grain. Yeah, you can see the, and, and you'll actually see this, what they'll actually There you go, do, see the planets, the whole thing, okay. What ahead. they'll actually do is they'll say equal, equal to the dust particles through this size filter. So if you look at this filter, this penny's laying on, this is a 400 micron filter laying next to a penny. Damn. So I'll give you a little perspective about what that is. There's a 500 micron filter. With okay, one second, that means nothing to me. Here's what I want to know. Yeah. Somewhere somebody has done in a workshop that will tell you that if That's, you have a saw and you cut something, it's floating in there. Not now, but at some point we'll talk about it. Then you'll tell me, hey, guess what? That is, looking at this slide, Mike, that is combustible dust because combustible dust has to be sized what? 500 microns or smaller. If we, if we find that to be the case, well, then it's combustible dust. Well, we'll go on. Guys? Okay. Unless there's something compelling, let's move on. So we know what combustible dust is. 500 yes. microns or smaller. Okay, if you have that, guess what, Mario? Brian, you're going to show us a, a, a video? Sure. Okay. Now watch this, Mario. Well, I'm going to go on to class one, division one, division two. Wait, ready? A class two, division one, would be you'd have combustible dust, 500 microns or smaller, in the air under normal operating conditions and quantities. Now watch this. And quantities sufficient to produce an explosion. I don't know. Let's assume it's 500 microns. If you're in a workshop and you're cutting stuff in my workshop and I'm building furniture, I'm building stuff, I don't know that I have sufficient amount in there to produce an explosion or ignitable. I don't know what it takes to do that. I don't think just sawing and having some dust floating is, it, I don't know. The next one, well, mechanical failure. So this is division one, one uh oh, right? Yes. Division one. A mechanical failure, abnormal. Mario, you underlined the word, right? Abnormal operation. Uh, uh, something about group E combustible dust may be present and quantity sufficient. I, I don't know what group E combustible dust is. And that now group E, whatever that's going to be, in normal or abnormal, that means group E dust is like really bad because it doesn't even have to be abnormal. So if you're working with whatever group E dust is and it's, it's, yeah. Ab It'll We're going to talk about the groups a little later. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to that later. All right. But whatever it is, that's one oh oh. Let's go to two oh oh. Well, division two is not likely, right, Mario? And it, it, due to abnormal operation. See, this was normal operating condition. You'd have the dust. This is an abnormal condition that you would have the dust. Right. Okay. Mario. And f this one, the first OO, has to be in the air, the combustible dust in the air. The second OO, it could just be laying on the equipment. Well, well that's that. Div 1, Div 2. Right. Okay, right. Div 2, in which combustible dust in abnormal conditions may be present air sufficient quantity. Okay, that'd be abnormally. There's something that happened. You're just saying, okay. In the air. Okay, where combustible dust accumulates or, or, accumulates are present but are normally insufficient to interfere with the normal. I know if you have dust landing on something, it's not interfering with the normal operation of it, but could as a result of an infrequent malfunctioning of handling and processing become suspended in the air. Okay, well, again, this is in the air. And three, in which combustible dust accumulation on, in or in the vicinity of the equipment could be sufficient to interfere with the safe dissipation. Dissipation. Dissip dissipation. Dissipation. <laughs> Never had a problem with that word. Dissipation of heat from equipment. In other words, if you get enough dust landing on top of something and it keeps building and building and building, you have a normal motor, you have a normal light, you got normal equipment, but that the heat keeps building up there. It's almost like spontaneous combustion, right? You know, put it, you know, it's like this thing is now going to be building up. So you're really going to have to have some scenario. All right, Brian, you're going to give us a... I got a video, sure. Okay. All right. Now, Brian, tell us what's going on here. Is that a thing? Got a grain silo that's collapsing. Yeah. Well, we're starting to get some dust. 
It must be less than 500 microns. Yeah. And that's just to happen. Pretty common, not too common, but I mean, it's not uncommon for problems with silos because I guess whatever that kind of dust is, I mean, maybe it could be big corn, but by the time it, it moves around, it creates the dust that's going to be 500 microns. I love that note. I like knowing 500 microns. I'm going to use it the whole <laughs> phase. All right, let's go to class three. Oh, by the way, that would be like, uh, dust would be like coal. Like you'd have like conveyor belts, conveyors with like power plants, and they have all this coal being put on, on conveyors and it's moving around. So there's a lot of, don't just think silos, just not, just a lot of it. Class three, a location, let me do it here. A location is an area, a class three location, an area where easily ignitable fibers or materials producing combustible flyings are handled, manufactured or used, and are not likely to be suspended in the air in quantity sufficient to produce ignitable mixtures. Likely. Why does I say not likely? Class three, class three, look at those in the terms of are where mixtures producing are handled. Okay, where they're handled, used, in which flying fibers are not likely to be suspended in air quantity sufficient to produce. Okay. That's There's a good informational note on this one. What's it say? Um, some examples could be... Um, oh, we need to add a slide, Brian. Um, add a slide. Cotton, cotton gins and cotton seed mills, flax processing plants, clothing manufacturing plants, woodworking plants. We actually have that. Okay. Now here, class three, division one, one oh oh is an area where easily fibers are manufactured, handled, or used. Okay. Then, okay, and the informational yeah. note. This is going to be factories, right? They're making clothing, and you got all this little tiny stuff floating all over. Huh? Factories or farms. Or farms. Yeah, depending on, on what they're doing, if they're pre-processing grain Okay, or yeah, yeah, right. That's right. That's right. We saw the video of that. Uh, a Division two location is an area where easily ignitable fibers are stored or handled other than in the manufacturing. 